thank you for being here. You know, this week is often a solemn and a thoughtful time for us in the NASA family with the 20th anniversary of Columbia yesterday and our day of remembrance tomorrow. And it's just a one, multiple reminders for us that we need to, in human spaceflight, remain vigilant and continue to recognize that we are keeping the safety of the crew in our hands. And so we're really headed into a very critical time right now um, in our joint operations in LEO. In fact, we're heading into, I would say, one of the busiest increments in the history of station. Um, you know, we have a string of critical missions coming up with the flight of the replacement Soyuz, our Crew-6 launch, our Crew-5 return, and all that work is going to be preparing us with the crew complement to support the critical science that we'll be conducting. And then the additional crew visits that we have with our Boeing crewed flight test and our Axiom-2 mission. You know, I just I look at the patch and this panel exemplifies to me the ISS collaboration, right? Here we are with our ISS program and our commercial crew program team, um, our partnership here with SpaceX, our professional relationship and continued relationship, work, teamwork with our Roscosmos partners. And then here we we're getting a new face, Salim's joining the team on the increment. Um, but I want to wrap up by saying this team here knows that they need to focus on us doing this right and us carefully working through each of these missions to ensure the safe operation of the International Space Station and our ongoing operations there. Thank you. And Steve. Thanks, Kathy. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here representing our commercial crew program team today. Uh, this is always a time of year for me to sort of step back and as we have our commercial crew program day of remembrance activities tomorrow to think about uh, what we do and the diligence that it takes to put every mission together, the care of every spacecraft, the care of every decision we make relative to analysis and all those sorts of things. So, you know, space flight is certainly challenging. It still is challenging here in 2023. but. We take that very seriously in commercial crew and are, are looking forward to a safe mission when we're ready to fly. Um, it's exciting to be getting ready for Crew-6 uh, as we get into that final phase. Uh, a lot of the hardware is already at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Dragon is being processed, is going through those final checkouts. Uh, and the crew will go down, I know Sarah will talk more about it, but the crew will go down and do a checkout of that spacecraft. Uh, uh, this weekend and, and look at the interior and all the systems on the spacecraft. Uh, we have uh, almost all the Falcon 9 hardware at the Cape for the flight. Uh, we still have the, the first stage is still um, uh, getting its final processing uh, in McGregor, Texas. It'll ship down around uh, February 4th or so and then we'll have all the hardware down for the flight for the final, uh, putting all the final pieces together. You know, our uh, NASA and SpaceX teams are doing the final reviews of all the data for the flight. Uh, we're in the process of closing out uh, any uh, in-flight anomalies from other missions, and we're in the middle of doing that. Extremely proud of the team that we have. We've been working really hard, uh, even through the holiday, into the new, new year and getting ready for Crew-6. And then, as, as Kathy said, we have a busy spring in front of us. We'll take each mission, you know, one step at a time, and the first one is Crew-6. And uh, as Leah said, the launch date is uh, February 26th, uh, nice early in the morning, 207 Eastern launch time. And uh, we'll be ready when the vehicle and all the hardware is ready to go and the crew and all the other things it takes to, to execute the human spaceflight mission. Following that, we'll have about a five-day handover and then we'll bring the Crew-5 Dragon home. We will do an inspection of that vehicle before we bring it back and that'll be around March 4th is when we'll undock and land and we'll, a couple weeks before that, we'll inspect the heat shield and make sure it's ready to come home. And with that, I'll turn it over to my good friend and colleague, Joel Montabano. Thank you, Steve, and thank you, Kathy. As, as Steve and Kathy mentioned, the Day of Remembrance, uh, we also take out, take a time out uh, this week in the space station program and kind of reflect on the lessons learned and make sure we're still carrying those forward. 
Um, it's important as we look at human spaceflight that we learn from the past and that we never forget and, and always bring those lessons with us. Mm -hmm. You know, on Crew-6, uh, we're excited to talk on the horizon of another crew exchange mission, right? These missions are, are what we do and, and they are what we can take together and showcase the International Space Station. Uh, with this crew, with Steve, uh, has three flights behind him. This will be his fourth mission. He'll be flying with uh, three first-timers. Um, combination with Steve and then Frank Rubio on orbit, they'll help the first flyers get going. And uh, this expedition will be another example of what we can do with the International Space Station. Uh, this crew will be scheduled for about 250 experiments uh, for research. Uh, they'll also be doing technology development for exploration as well as commercial low Earth orbit uh, activities. Uh, we're continuing the integrated crew exchange that we started uh, last year in the fall, so we'll have another cosmonaut on this mission. We'll also have the first long duration United Arab Emirates crew member on the International Space Station. And Sultan, if you remember, he was the backup for Haza when Haza flew on the Soyuz. And so he's very familiar with the International Space Station, familiar with our program. And it's excited to have another country's astronaut on board. And it's excited to expand human spaceflight across the globe. Uh, this mission will launch on February 26th. Uh, Steve mentioned uh, we'll have uh, a short handover with the Crew-5. Uh, the Crew-5, they're not slowing down. They have about a month to go. And we'll be excited uh, once they're back on Earth. But uh, those guys are fully subscribed. And we're keeping them busy with the science and, and utilization on board the International Space Station. Uh, just a few days prior to the 26th launch, uh, Roscosmos will launch the uncrewed Soyuz on February 20th. Uh, the docking will be February 22nd, so two days later, what commonly referred to as a 34-orbit rendezvous. And so we're excited. You know, Kathy mentioned, you know, how busy the time frame is. And so just to kind of lay out, uh, we have a, a launch of a progress vehicle in early February. We have the Soyuz that I mentioned, the Crew-6. Right after Crew-6, we'll have a SpaceX-27, a cargo mission, followed uh, in April by the Northrop Grumman mission. Uh, we'll have the Boeing CFT mission in this year, and then the Axiom-2 mission also in the, the second quarter of this year. And so that's just the first, first part. Uh, you keep going. We have another SpaceX Cargo Dragon mission, another Progress mission, a Northrop Grumman mission throughout the rest of the year. Uh, Soyuz exchange, another crew exchange, just rocking and rolling. And so uh, with that, uh, huge thanks to our international partners, huge thanks to the commercial crew program, huge thanks to SpaceX and, and all our domestic partners.